Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Liverpool Cathedral and to the installation of the fifth Chancellor of Liverpool, John Moores University. Will you now all please stand as we prepare to welcome the procession into the cathedral? Thank you. Sir Brian, Chancellors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure 
on behalf of the Dean and Chapter to welcome you most warmly to Liverpool Cathedral for this happy occasion. Last Friday night, uh, Light Night took place across this city, and as part of that, there was a candlelit labyrinth in this cathedral created by the Liverpool John Moores University business development team with music from your own well-being choir. To everyone's amazement, of the 6,000 people who came here that evening, 4,000 walked through that labyrinth. And it seems a perfect illustration of the vocations of JMU and this cathedral and the potential as we work together, reaching out to huge numbers of people from every walk of life, using hard work and creativity to produce something inspirational and encouraging reflection on the journey through life. So, Sir Brian, please consider us at this cathedral partners, friends, co-conspirators even, and be assured of our prayers for you, for this great university, and for the students that you serve today and in the years to come. And welcome. I call upon the student union presidents to light the candles to symbolize the foundations of the university and our vision to be recognized as a modern civic university delivering solutions to the challenges of the 21st century. University Secretary and Deputy Chief Executive Alison Wilde to read the resolution of the Board of Governors. On the 1st of April 2013, the Board of Governors of Liverpool John Moores University resolved to appoint the Right Honourable Sir Brian Leveson as Chancellor of the University in succession to Dr Brian May. I therefore invite Professor Nigel Wetherill, Vice-Chancellor of the University, to nominate the fifth Chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University. Lord Lieutenant, High Sheriff, Lord Mayor, Worshipful Mayors, Canon, Chief Constable, Chancellor, Chancellor Emeritus, Pro-Chancellor, Governors, Honorary Fellows, Ladies and Gentlemen, Staff and Students. It gives me great pleasure as Vice-Chancellor to present the Right Honourable Sir Brian Leveson, Lord Justice of Appeal, as the fifth Chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University. The role of Chancellor at a university is often described as symbolic, a person whose name appears on the degree certificates that mark the achievements of our students and the official documents of university life. At Liverpool John Moores University, we have been extremely fortunate that our chancellors have been anything but symbolic. 
But realistically, with their many talents, could we have expected anything less? Let me just consider for a moment our Chancellor Emeritus, Dr. Brian May. How many people can claim to have played God Save the Queen from the rooftop of Buckingham Palace? and by the acclaim of many critics, to be one of the top guitarists ever, if not the very best. That, of course, is not all. At the same time, Dr. May holds a PhD in astrophysics and is still an active astronomer. And if that was not enough, he demonstrates his passion for animal welfare and is vice president of the Royal Society for the Prevention of the cruelty to animals. And now we are joined by our new Chancellor, who has questioned some of the UK's most powerful people, including Prime Ministers, in more than 100 days of hearing, heard and received evidence from 135 organisations, 474 people about the future of the British press, its relationship with the police, politicians, and how it should be regulated. I ask you, do we really expect these two exceptional individuals, our chancellors, just to sign degree certificates and then sit back and think that the job is done? I think not. From our first chancellor, Henry Cotton, to John Moores, to Sherry Booth, and to Dr. Brian May, all our chancellors have shared a passion and enthusiasm for this university that has seen them immersed in university life, genuinely interested in the endeavours of our staff and our students, as well as helping us to extend the reach of the university. Our chancellors have been so committed to this university that they have forged roles for themselves well beyond their term of office to continue their active involvement in the university. And I acknowledge this and thank them all. And so, before I present Sir Brian Leveson as our new Chancellor, I want to pay tribute to his predecessor, Dr Brian May, who has embodied the spirit and the heart of Liverpool John Moores University in a way that we could never have planned, but we have been so fortunate to have experienced. It is not easy to find in one individual the character, credentials, enthusiasm, and the personality that fits so well with the dreams and aspirations of a university like Liverpool John Moores. In Brian May, we have an individual who has wanted to be more than a signature on a piece of paper. As Chancellor, he gave us time, his energy, and his interest. To be here today, when he's in constant demand from around the world, is evidence indeed of his commitment to our university. He has been inspirational for students and our staff. And so, on a personal note on, and on behalf of the University, I would like to thank Dr May, who has been a tremendous asset to Liverpool John Moores University. And I would ask you all to join me in congratulating him as he now becomes Chancellor Emeritus. There is no job description for a Chancellor. It's not a role that comes with instructions, but it is one of great expectation. Certainly for the governing body of the university, finding a suitable and appropriate individual is a hard task, and particularly given the footsteps in which the fifth Chancellor would have to tread. And in Sir Brian Leveson, we couldn't have had a better candidate. Sir Brian's achievements in the judiciary have been and continue to be extraordinary. Last year, we welcomed Sir Brian to the LJMU family when he became an honorary fellow of the university in recognition of his outstanding contribution to the legal profession, following a distinguished judicial career and many years of dedicated public service. There can be no one here today who has not heard or read the name Leveson. As Sir Brian has said himself, 
Leveson is no longer a name, a proper noun, it is an adjective. The word Leveson is in the media almost every day and has been over the last two years, thanks to the public inquiry he led in 2011. But he was already a highly accomplished and successful legal professional before he became a headline. Born in Liverpool in 1949, Brian Leveson was educated at Liverpool College and Merton College, Oxford. He was called to the bar in 1970 and practiced on the Northern Circuit from chambers in Liverpool, across the full range of common law, crime, personal injury and commercial work. The Northern Circuit dates back to 1176, when King Henry II sent his judges on circuit to do justice in his name and remains to this day at the forefront of legal development in England and Wales. He was appointed Queen's Counsel in 1986, acted as a recorder from 1988 to 2000, and as a Deputy High Court Judge between 1998 and 2000. During this period, he was the lead prosecutor in several high-profile cases. In 2000, he was appointed a Judge of the High Court, Queen's Bench Division, and served as a presiding judge of the Northern Circuit. In 2005, he was appointed to the new position of Deputy Senior Presiding Judge. And in 2006, he was made a Lord Justice of Appeal. He served a three-year term as Senior Presiding Judge for England and Wales from 2006, and was appointed to the new role of Chairman of the Sentencing Council in 2010. In 2011, he led the public inquiry into issues of media regulation and the culture, practice and ethics of the press, and its relationship with the public, with politicians and with the police. His report into the culture, practice and ethics of the press, published at the end of last year, is regarded as the lightning rod for fundamental changes in the way the media operates. The dedication and commitment he demonstrated during the intense period of the inquiry and his unswerving focus under the continuing spotlight has been extraordinary. In the heat of the inquiry, Lord Justice Leveson made a clear statement, I will not be deterred from seeking to fulfil the terms of reference that have been set for me a clear statement of his values at a time when we cannot even appreciate the pressure he was under. And it has been this side of his character that makes Sir Brian the ideal candidate to become the fifth Chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University. He has maintained dignity, integrity and most of all a distinct Liverpool sense of humour throughout his career and he remains true to the city in which he was born. I can say with some certainty that in Sir Brian Leveson, I believe we have found a kindred spirit, a true advocate for the university at the highest level and role model for our staff, students and extended family. I said earlier that Sir Brian's achievements in the judiciary have been and continue to be extraordinary. This has been achieved through hard work dedication and total commitment. All values, our university, all values of our university and his achievements are an inspiration to us all, staff and students. We are a university that has welcomed whole generations of first-time university students, people from all walks of life and all kinds of backgrounds, who may never have expected to go to university to graduate and to fulfil their ambitions. We encapsulate this in those three words, dream, plan and achieve, because they are meaningful in so many different ways to so many of our students and our staff. At LGMU, we live by our commitment to help those whose dreams and aspirations to achieve, no matter how long it takes and how hard the challenge might be, and we can do that because we have people like our new Chancellor and our past Chancellors who believe in us and do all they can to help us. We are honoured and privileged that the Right Honourable Sir Brian Leveson, Lord Justice of Appeal, has agreed to become our Chancellor. 
I invite Dr. Brian May to bring forward Sir Brian Leveson for induction and installation of this university. Thank you. Sir Brian, on behalf of the university, I present you with the declaration of office and invite you to pronounce your acceptance of the role of Chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University. I, Brian Leveson, do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will well and faithfully serve Liverpool John Moores University as its Chancellor. I will use my office with integrity and enthusiasm to encourage and foster advancement through education, training, research and the transfer of knowledge. I am committed to the collective aspirations of our students and staff to dream, plan and achieve and to support Liverpool John Moores University in its ambition to be recognised as a modern civic university delivering solutions to the challenges of the 21st century. As Chairman of the Governing Board of Liverpool John Moores University, I now formally proclaim the Right Honourable Sir Brian Leveson as the Fifth Chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University. Chancellor, many congratulations and a very warm welcome. invite the University Marshals to bring forward representatives of the University community to welcome the Chancellor. Chancellor, we present Dame Lorna Muirhead, Lord Lieutenant of Merseyside and Honorary Fellow of Liverpool John Moores University. Sir Brian, on behalf of the Crown, I welcome you to the County of Merseyside as a new Chancellor and offer you our sincere and heartfelt congratulations on your appointment. And representing the Honorary Fellows of the University, it gives me great personal pleasure to welcome you back to the university and to offer you our support in your new role as our Chancellor. Chancellor, we present Ian Meadows, High Sheriff of Merseyside, and on behalf of RS Clare and Company, Corporate Associate of Liverpool John Moores University. Chancellor, 
On behalf of the Office of High Sheriff, welcome back to Merseyside, and I wish you every success in your term of office. And representing the corporate business associates of the university and the wider business community, we welcome you to Liverpool John Moores University. Congratulations. We present Councillor Sharon Sullivan, Lord Mayor of Liverpool, the first citizen and chosen representative of the city. Thank you. Chancellor, nice to meet you. From the people of your native city, welcome. We offer you our support and our encouragement in your new role as figurehead in Liverpool and may the university flourish under your patronage as a modern, modern civic institution representing the city at home and abroad. And what a wonderful day for the Jewish community in Liverpool. Be made so very welcome and I wish you all the best. It's an honour to meet you. Thank you. Chancellor, we present Paul Abernathy and Curtis Reid from the Liverpool Students' Union. I would like to thank everyone at the University for inviting us along to this fantastic occasion. On behalf of the student body, Sir Brian, we would like to welcome you to Liverpool John Moores University. We may be slightly biased, but I believe you're joining one of the best institutions in the United Kingdom. As a student union, we have a very mature working relationship with university management that is based on partnership. Liverpool John Moores isn't afraid to change, and this is a good thing. The student experience is the priority at this university, and for us, it is the reason that we exist. But when we say our university is one of the best, it is not for any of these reasons. The reason why we're one of the best is because of our students. So you see, our students achieve some remarkable things, from winning national championships and sports to building a Formula One car. We do have some of the most capable students in the UK. They build orphanages in their summer break, they run community centres in Kensington, and they manage societies that change people's lives. These are the people that make our institution amazing. As our Chancellor, you'll be an ambassador, but when you visit places around the world, I ask you don't talk about our world-class teaching, nor talk about the fantastic buildings we have but we'll talk about our students because these are truly the greatest asset the university could have. And again, on behalf of the Students' Union and the student body, we would like to welcome you to Liverpool John Moores University. Chancellor, we present Hannah Thorpe and Dr. Ian Belger from Liverpool John Moores University Alumni Association. Chancellor, we are here, here to, to represent hundreds, hundreds of thousands of graduates from, from Liverpool, Liverpool John Moores University across the globe. We are, we are proud to welcome you as a new figurehead of the our university. university.
Chancellor, we present Professor Carol Mundell from the Astrophysics Research Institute and Paul Wright from the School of Engineering, Technology and Maritime Operations. Chancellor, on behalf of the academic, the research and the teaching staff of the faculties, and on behalf of the technical resource and support staff of the faculties, we welcome, welcome you as, as our, our Chancellor, Chancellor and, and our Ambassador. Chancellor, we present Claire Breen from the Academic Registry and Val Stevenson from Library Services. Chancellor, on behalf of the service, support and administrative staff of the divisions and on behalf of the professional learning and support staff of the division, congratulations, congratulations from, from us all. We are proud to welcome you to the university and we celebrate your installation as Chancellor. This concludes the formal acclamations. We now welcome the University Wellbeing Choir to perform.
I call upon the Chancellor, the Right Honourable Sir Brian Leveson, to respond. Chancellor Emeritus, Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It is appropriate that the first two words that I utter, having assumed this high and honourable office in this magnificent cathedral, should be those. I start by thanking the Board of Governors for their nomination of me and the Vice-Chancellor both for his extremely generous words of introduction and for the way that he, the team in his office, and indeed everyone at the university has welcomed me into the LJMU family. I next thank my predecessor, Dr. Brian May, whom I congratulate on becoming Chancellor Emeritus at this ceremony alongside me. I hope that LJMU does not live to regret having moved from a star who is interested in the stars to someone who has pursued rather more mundane activities. I thank all who've welcomed me this afternoon, our civic leaders, our staff, and our students, both past and present. This afternoon, at this truly remarkable ceremony, in the presence of the principal officers and governors of the university, it is with pride, pleasure, and no little humility that I formally accept the role of Chancellor of Liverpool John Moores University bestowed upon me with effect from last month. You have done me great honour. It is a role that I accept wholeheartedly and with great enthusiasm, not least because of the prospect of my further association with a university that has a truly fantastic ethos and that day after day demonstrates its humanity and its spirit. This fact has not come as a surprise, for I have known of its reputation for many years, but it, now it has come first-hand, demonstrated when I lectured, when I was awarded an honorary fellowship, and now over recent months, underlined by my interactions with staff and students alike. The university has a human side like no other. As the Vice-Chancellor has said, I am a son of the city of Liverpool. I was born and brought up here. I went to school here. I started my professional life in Castle Street, next door to the Town Hall. I appeared in court at Dale Street and at St George's Hall, and then at Queen Elizabeth II Law Courts. Although my work took me to London, my wife and I have stayed close to our roots in the city, thanks to members of our family, many of whom I am delighted are here today. As a Liverpudlian, I have always been acutely aware of this university, from its days as a polytechnic, and latterly, over the past 20 years, as Liverpool John Moores University. I have watched as it has become deeply entrenched in the fabric of the city. LJMU is a highly visible university, not only in terms of buildings and the physical campus. The plans for the University Village announced last week will have a real impact on the city, but much more. It has what can only be described as a presence in Liverpool like no other urban institution. From its origins in 1825, as symbolised by the candles here this afternoon. Its founding principle was to revolutionise education in Liverpool, to provide opportunities for the working people of the city, to open up opportunity for all, and to increase the diversity of those who can aspire to higher education. There could be no higher aspiration. It was founded by men of power, influence, and more significantly, vision, who recognised the transformative effects of education and the impact that learning and aspiration can have on individuals, on communities, and on society as a whole. That was the pioneering movement that laid the foundations 
for Liverpool John Moores University and, its, and in its present manifestation with a clearer vision of what its founders foresaw, a vision to be known as a great modern civic university, drawing upon that unique heritage while forging a path in the demanding society that the 21st century has brought with it. I mentioned earlier that my interaction with staff and students has already been enormously enriching. I met a number of members of staff when I delivered my Roscoe lecture in 2010. Then here, last year in this very cathedral, on this same stage, I was privileged to share a graduation ceremony with over 500 students who crossed the stage to shake hands with the Vice-Chancellor and who all took time to nod or acknowledge me as I sat there waiting to be conferred as an honorary fellow. To them and to me, it seemed as if I was one of them for the day and there is certainly standing, no standing on ceremony with LJMU students. They are bright, confident and completely refreshing in their approach to life. Earlier this year, I met two students, Hannah and Katie, from the Faculty of Education who came to visit me in my chambers at the Royal Court of Justice with their tutor, Laura. We spent some time chatting about my new role as Chancellor and about Liverpool. And just this morning, I was delighted to meet with some of our final year product design students, Oscar, Matt and Phil, whom I hope to meet again here in this cathedral on this stage in July when they graduate. I suspect that the students that I've mentioned here briefly and others like them are the very reason that former chancellors remain so involved in LJMU. Our students are the lifeblood of this university, constantly surprising, enormously engaged and engaging and a real credit to LJMU. And I am now proud to be able to play a part in their student years to preside over their graduation ceremonies, to shake their hands when they cross this stage, and like the alumni present here today, to hear about the paths they have forged themselves beyond graduation. I know that I am following a great tradition of chancellors who represent the university and who have become a real part of the university. It's a path I fully intend to follow to help this university to dream, to plan, and to achieve its own ambitions and its future success. I finish as I started. Thank you. I call upon the Vice-Chancellor to address the Assembly. This ceremony marks the closing of the chapter on the tenure of our Emeritus Chancellor, Dr. Brian May, whilst opening the chapter for our new Chancellor, the Right Honourable Sir Brian Leveson. As such, it marks another milestone in the history of our university. I have said on many occasions that the university is on a journey, a journey through time and events that can be traced back to our educational roots in the 1820s. The successive generations of the LJMU family have much to be proud of. So what of the next chapter? How will the university continue to evolve? What do we hope to become and how will we navigate the events of our day? Let me, let me share with you my thinking some have heard this before. I apologize if that is the case. I begin with an observation, a brief commentary on what are universities and what is their purpose. America has its Harvard, its Princeton, its Stanford. England has its Oxford and Cambridge and other great research universities. And long may these exceptional institutions flourish. 
Countries need these institutions. The world needs these institutions. People from all walks of life, from across the globe, need these institutions. But we must never get to a position where all universities just strive to become clones of these institutions and where government through policy and funding blindly supports an unwritten and unspoken hierarchical status quo. We have a vision here at LJMU about what we want to be, what identity we want to have. We are a modern civic university, a one university, true to the values of our roots. That is, through education, we can change the lives of those that we touch. So in the next chapter of the story of the university, under the leadership of our new chancellor, our focus is clear. And this is the belief and thought that I want to leave with you all. Yes, whilst every country needs an Oxford or a Cambridge or a Harvard, we will demonstrate that every city in the world needs a Liverpool John Moores University. And we will evidence this by leading by example. And through leadership, we will exemplify a university with a civic conscience, a university that respects and works with its community, a university that offers opportunity to all those who have the desire and commitment to engage, a university built upon the two pillars of an outstanding student experience and broad scholarship. And as such, and through these mechanisms, we will be a university that delivers solutions to the challenges of the 21st century. With this vision, we will define anew the word university, and through this, we will extend our influence, not just within the city, the region, but nationally and globally. Building on the firm foundations of the term of office of our Emeritus Chancellor and our recently retired Pro-Chancellor, Sir Malcolm Thornton, we will, with our new Chancellor, now at the head of the LJMU family, and our new Pro-Chancellor, Mr Rod Hill, enter the new chapter with strength, with self-confidence and a burning passion to deliver our vision. The university motto, fortune assists the bold. In conclusion, I paraphrase a message taken from President John F. Kennedy's inaugural address in January 1961. Our vision will not be realized in the first 100 days nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days, nor perhaps in the lifetime of this chancellorship. But on this very special day, let us begin. That does indeed conclude the ceremony of the installation of the fifth chancellor of Liverpool, John Moores University. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for all your continuing support. And I am convinced our vision and our ambition will be realized with your support. Could I please ask you to stand as the procession led by our Chancellor leaves the cathedral. Thank you. <laughs>